pi. Uh, in this section, I just want to make the point that it's important to uh, try to anticipate change uh, if you want to get the biggest return on investment. I mean, those people who see a new paradigm first and are able to seize it successfully do the best. Not that the first mover is always the big winner. Sometimes it's the fast follower who is an imitative innovator, uh, if you will, that succeeds. Uh, so as we look at the life cycle of our particular industry and the products in our industry, uh, we also have to check to see if our, our rules, our beliefs, uh, our assumptions are in synchronization with the, the stage we're in. Uh, you know, to give you an example of uh, a paradigm change that gives a big return on investment, you might think of the Fosbury flop. A guy named Dick Fosbury won the 1968 uh, Mexican Olympics uh, in the high jump by doing the flop, which everybody now does. And it's a long story as to how he evolved into doing that. His coach wouldn't let him do it until finally he was out of Oregon and he could do it anyway to win the, the Olympic trials and then go on to win the Olympics. And after he won the Olympics, you know, the ergonomic kind of people got together and said, you know what, this is actually a breakthrough. It, it, is, it is superior to the straddle. And actually, you would have a different kind of anatomical build to be able to do the flop ideally and best. And none of the straddle jumpers had that, and none of them converted to the flop successfully. And the flop has been the reigning uh, paradigm, really, for jumping over a high bar ever since. Uh, in the previous uh, section, I alluded to the idea of washing your hands in the hospital to cut down on the, on the transfer of disease. Uh, and where hospitals were able to do systematic, consistent scrubbing, the, 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 the drop in in-house in, in infections dropped enormously. So it was, it was definitely a very effective uh, kind of paradigm. In distribution channels, in the United States, we can look back and, and see uh, sometimes people are fast followers, sometimes they're innovators. For example, Walmart was a fast follower. In 1962, it became legal to sell brand names for less. Kmart and Target actually started up first. They were spin-outs of the SS Kresge Corporation and the Dayton Hudson Corporation, respectively. So Sam Walton said, I'm closing down my Ben Franklin no brand name source of stores, and I'm going to open up a Walmart named after Kmart. And he went up and actually measured all the dimensions and racks and so forth at Kmart store to open up his version. But he did pioneer the two-step model, meaning I'll have a central warehouse and, and be the first guy in a small town in the southeast to to open up a store. Later on, it's sort of an accident of history as to how he was chosen to be in the, the, the pioneering pilot stage of what was became known as quick response from 83 to 86. Walmart was the only one that stepped up to do it, long story. And uh, But once they realized what a breakthrough it was, then they said, well, by God, let's, let's start innovating off this platform. So thereafter, they perpetually innovated off the platform and got Procter & Gamble to spend two years to to work hand in glove with them to make uh, the quick response work, you know, and of course the rest is history. Um, the uh, a more recent example, I think that we can, where we can sit back and look at change and shake our head and of course think that we're not going to be guilty of the same predicament is Circuit City in the book, Good to Great. It came, was published in 2000. The research was stopped in 1995. And of the 11 companies that were chosen in 1995 to write the book on, uh, the star of the stars as far as stock uh, stock market performance for the previous 15 years had been Circuit City. And they they kind of pioneered a little bit bigger specialty electronics stores and caught the Japanese just-in-time manufacturing wave of electronics perfectly. And then along came VHS uh, recording tape and they caught that perfectly and uh, grew a wonderful company. Uh, but they kept doing what they're doing. And Best Buy came along and sort of, in a sense, innovated from a store format right by them uh, to the point where by 2003, Circuit City was really moribund, dying, and uh, obviously officially bankrupt in 2008. Meanwhile, Best Buy has run into problems because of showrooming. People can go and look at products in a store, use their smartphone to scan the barcode and immediately shop online to see whether they can get those products cheaper, better from Amazon or someplace. Um, and the... The, the high definition TV screen craze is over. That pale that life cycle has been filled, and, and the and the and the products have become total commodities and being sold for less and less at Costco, Walmart, you know, uh, etc. Uh, Best Buy is now struggling to try to reinvent uh, their their business model. 
So the key is to is to look around and, and make sure we really do have an accurate assessment of today's customers' supply chain needs and make sure that we're totally in sync with with meeting those needs. So uh, we'll carry on with uh, this theme in, in subsequent slides. Thank you.